But I we like watched, the stuff with Luger. We watched Raw 24, July 5th, 1993. So this is the day after, obviously, July 4th, and the Stars and Stripes Challenge. And they're showing clips of guys trying and failing to slam Yokozuna and playing fanfare for the common man in the background. I want to point out here that one of the men trying and failing to slam Yokozuna was Braun Breaker's dad. And I couldn't help but note that he cheated and punched Yokozuna several times before trying to slam. I was laughing my ass off when they watched this because they had wrestlers and then they had real sports stars. Okay. And so maybe stars is kind of a stretch, but they had people that were in sports. So uh, these these sports guys would like walk up and they would grab this dude by the balls and they couldn't lift him and then they just walk away. But these fucking wrestlers are trying to beat the shit out of this guy. Yes. They're in there and they're attacking him and they're hitting the ropes and they're doing their war dance and they're coming off the top. I'm like, man, that doesn't seem fair. And the sports guys didn't get to like... You know, try and tackle him or hit him with a golf club or a baseball bat. They just had to try and lift the guy. It's weird. They didn't seem to have clear rules. I don't remember any of this. I just figured. You don't remember any of this? No, I remember Luger coming down in the helicopter. I remember him slamming him, but I don't remember all the build-up. Oh, man. I remember all of this. It was so wacky. And, And looking back at it, Luger made some of those other wrestlers look like chumps. Well, yeah. Especially. He made all of them look like chumps. Especially a guy like Scott Steiner. Like Scott Steiner of the 2000s. Can you imagine Luger trying to pull that? Well, he, see, would, not, he would have none of that. It wasn't Luger's fault. <laughs> well, he was it was, doing fake. What was booked. Yes. Of course. What are you talking about, Craig? No, I'm, tell, I'm saying that Scott Steiner would not. His ego would not let that happen. Oh, he was a professional. He would have. Oh. Please. What, do you think he's going to really go in there and shoot body slam Yokozuna? No, I'm thinking he wouldn't participate. Well, maybe he wouldn't participate. But you know what? He was a professional here. He participated. He was unable to lift the big man. He didn't have a plate in his forearm to help like Luger did. (laughs) That's true. And then besides, Luger was a hip toss, just like Bobby Heenan said. Sure. I only brought this up because we watched NXT in your house, and we talked about Braun Breaker's heritage of aggression. (laughs) <laughs> and I laughed at them, but you know what? They got a point. There was some aggression well, in this. Well, of course they did. Steiner family tree. You know, the other thing that I liked about it was um, I don't like to put myself over anything, but uh, I did the Raw report today on Observer Live, and uh, someone in the Twitch chat when I was done with the Raw report, in all caps, they wrote, Brian is the greatest storyteller ever. And I want you to know whoever it was that said that, it touched me. It touched me. To hear that. But I am not the greatest storyteller ever. Do you want to know who's the greatest fucking storyteller ever? Fucking Vince McMahon. His fucking voiceover for this challenge yeah. was the fucking most amazing thing I ever heard in my life. Golly, this fucker could spin a yarn. He's telling this fucking story, and I didn't write any of it down, but like, Luger's coming out and he's like, We always knew that Lex Luger cared about himself. But what we didn't know till today is that he cared about his country. And it's so fucking melodramatic. It's fucking preposterous. But, dude, this fucking guy was a master of storytelling. And, uh, you know, when you think about all of the, uh, when you think about, like, the glory period of WWE, when you think about, like, the 80s. I was going to say, this isn't it. Yeah, the well, you think about the 80s. And then you think about, like, the the Monday Night Wars. And, uh, you know, what all these things have in common is fucking Vince. He was either at the commentary booth, or he was holding the mic and cutting promos for these other fuckers, or he was doing voiceovers, or he was playing the Mr. McMahon character, and out there doing 20-minute promos. Like, this fucking guy, whatever you want to say about his booking nowadays... And, bro, I said a lot on Observer Live today. Whatever you want to say about it, this guy's the fucking heart and soul of of WWE. And he was the heart and soul of it when it was great. And, unfortunately, he's the heart and soul of it now when he can't book his way out of a paper bag. But, man, what a fucking storyteller this guy was. Whether as a character or as the announcer out there telling you all of the stories that he's booked in his head. I mean, he was fucking amazing on this show. He was amazing. 
So you got all, as Brian noted, the athletes would walk up, football players, hockey players. They'd briefly grab Yoko. I think Bill Freelich of the NFL may have gotten one leg off the ground a little bit, but they try. And uh, like that reader on a uh, listener on Facebook asked, when should you give up? One time after slamming Yokozuna, you should give up if it doesn't work. Uh, Crush was the last in-ring guy to go, and he actually got him up in the slam position, but his back gave out. And he goes down cl- clutching his back in agony. To talk him, by the way, like Scotty Steiner slapped him or punched him or whatever, and Rick Steiner punched him, and Yoko just shrugged it all off and didn't care. But Tatanka was like hitting the ropes and chopping him and coming off the top rope and chopping him. And when he, after he tried the slam and failed, Yoko said, okay, my turn. And he picked him up and squashed him and dropped the big leg and killed him. Well, Tatanka learned his lesson. So Randy Savage is there. He wasn't going to try, but everyone else has tried and failed. He's the last American left. He's got to give a go. He can't get it. And as you noted, now here's the thing. We weren't watching this like minute by minute. What we were watching was clearly an edited video package. Uh, which means Vince's voiceover was by definition done after the fact, so he had to have known how it was all going to end. But he's dejected, but still uh, boisterous. Oh, it's over! Yokozuna has humiliated America! But then the helicopter comes in. A helicopter's landing on the deck. We don't know who's on it. No! Could it be? Yes! It was Lex Luger! And Fuji claimed Lex was too late. Lex, Lex gave him a speech about a, the USA and tossed food. Oh the my ring. God! This fucking speech that Luger cut was an atrocity. Holy smokes! He's calling him like a uh, rice eating. Yeah, I forget negative. what the fuck he said, but it was like, a lot of stereotype. You know, you could have made the, uh, this fucking great without that bullshit. I'm just watching this thing, thinking, listen, I know, I, I know, we were in like a trade war, mm-hmm. but they're fucking booking this thing like. It's 1939. I'm like, fuck me, dude. We're not at war with Japan. Yeah. Fuck the shit that they were having. Uh, that was Raci- appalled. Racism was very popular. So that's what they did. So uh, Yoko charges. Lex dodges. Yoko hits the turnbuckle. Lex hits the loaded steel forearm shot. And he hits this slam-like thing. It's sort of a slam. It's not the best slam I ever saw, but it's a slam. And, of course, Vince goes ballistic. And now we go from the boat. And the last thing I want to say about this, and I was actually stunned by this part, they actually have, like, a full deck of people for this boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know it's in New York. There's a lot of people there who want to come see the boat, want to come see all these wrestlers, but you could not be to go to a boat and watch Body Slam Challenge. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so credit to them for fighting people who did. So Lex, ex- uh, excuse me, Vince explains that Lex has challenged Yoko to a title match. Mr. Fuji has refused. And Vince thanks all of the athletes who showed up to the event. And Savage says he is damn proud of Lex Luger. Rusty, Rusty Rose, 10, 4, 86. <laughs> Dusty, is it Rusty or Dusty? <laughs> it's, uh, it's Dusty. Harmon Blanchett. <laughs> okay, out of ring. Her, her Herman and Blanchett. <laughs> Harwin. <laughs> way back then they had cha- chain barricades. <laughs> And then they had a tag team with Rich, uh, Rick Flair, and some more guys, and so that was that. I'm just too, going, going who around. who I'm did not. Rusty Rhodes wrestle? <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.